tea. Press your weary head and let your heart decide. <laughs> yes, yes, so hello sir. Today we are back with another patron request, another voice play one. Voice play are certainly popular this month with the requests. Thank you to Juliana for this one. This is their Queen in five minutes. If you don't know, I love Queen. I don't think I've shown this before. But yeah, I've had this for many, many years now in my room. Good old Freddy. I've done reactions to various Queen covers on my channel. Adam Lambert, Pentatonix, Jared Halley, the latter two acapella covers. So you can find them in my acapella playlist up here if you're interested. A lot of comments have said that this is a good one to hear more of Earl Elkins Jr. In my last but one voice play reaction, Mr. Blue Sky, I commented on his voice quite a lot, how it's so unique and so piercing and just quite crazy in general, I think. So that will be interesting and otherwise I don't have much more to say. This is from 2000. And 18. Here are the songs in order. All of them are great. So let's get straight into this one. Very, very excited. Is this the real life? Is this just fantasy? Caught in a landslide, no escape from reality. Reality, reality. up your mind and let me step inside rest your weary head and let your heart decide it's so easy when you know the rules it's so easy all you have to do is play the game play the game everyone play the game each morning i get up i die a little can barely stand on my feet take a look The trouble with making videos is you have to say things that are worthwhile. I have nothing to say that's worthwhile. So, so much there. So, so much there. A lot of cool things. I definitely missed probably most of it because there's so much going on. My brain is very stimulated right now. Why I just paused is because something interesting happened, but I'll get to that in the end. Let's go back over what we've heard so far. If you don't want to hear my analysis, go to the timestamp. That opening, I love how it sets the tone of theatricalness. It's like a show more than just a song, L like a proper video. Is it going to be possible to pause and see? No, probably not. But that's the Bohemian Rhapsody, you know, classic image. It's weird saying it's like a proper video because all of their videos are awesome. Such high production value. But with this, I don't know, maybe you'll understand what I'm trying to say. It's just even more different than their videos usually are compared to everything else out there. Then we get this section where he kind of wakes up. Reality. I think it's very clever, by the way, him being in bed like this. The lyrics, is this real life or is it just fantasy? Caught in a landline, no escape from reality. He's escaping reality now by waking up, is he? This weird coma dream. Reality. So there. The obvious note is this D flat. The key we're in is B flat. But that D flat turns it into a minor chord and it clashes with the leftover major third that we just heard. So we've got minor dominating major or in other words sad dominating happy. So is this a nightmare? Is that what we're being told? Or what would make more sense is that he's dead because look at the titles of their characters. Sentinel of the Underworld, Judge of Souls and Usher of the Dead. Dark Angel and Gatekeeper. Now, if there's some lore behind these characters, I don't know it, so let me know in the comments. Ironically though, at this bit when he is supposedly dead, we move straight back to the major. Jeff's bass line as well, it's quite manic. And he's going. 
alternating between the root note B flat, because we're in B flat, and then this one. We might typically expect it to be instead. We do have the essence of the original song here, but things are a bit different from a harmonic perspective, completely intentionally, of course, and that's why I think this arrangement is so good from what I've seen. It's much more than just taking the song and transcribing it into voice parts. It's a complete rework and mashup. It's, yeah, very good. Then Jay Nunn, he has the high part, which is nice to see. Open up your and intermittently against Lane's effects. Yeah, it's just a cool little bit there and acts as a very nice transition into the next song, which is Play the Game. I love this and you'll notice it sounds very different to the original. Open up your mind and let me step inside. This is due to the rhythmic treatment. The original was in common time. Open up your one, two, one, two. Here we're thinking in terms of threes. Da -da 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 -da. That allows for the bouncy effect. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, which is really one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Press your weary head and let your heart decide. It's so easy. When you know I love those chords on easy or easy. You'll again notice it sounds different to the original, so let me explain why from a harmonic perspective. In the original, we have these two chords. If I transpose it into voice bass key, so that's the root chord, and then the relative minor. The melody in the original is the fifth note of both chords. So on easy, we get this note, and then in the next chord, the fifth note is this D. So the melody is on easy, F, D. Here, voice play, they do use the same two chords, but the melody is not the fifth note of each chord, it's the third note. So in this chord, it's the D, and then in the second chord, it's this here, the B flat. And they move downwards, so instead of, we get, This essentially restructures the chords and which notes have more of the harmonic strength. Everyone play the game. Yeah, that's nice. Everyone play the game. But then this chord happens. I'm thinking, oh, what's this? And then we get the transition. It's quite abrupt, to be honest, but it does work. They return to the root chord again, that B flat chord. <laughs> So far, they've always been returning to this root. God, what you what you to me? Go on, Earl. What voice? And then just after that, I think before we carry on, this section here, now in the original song, whenever I listen to it, I always, always hum the bass part. Can anybody find me? Uh. It's so nice in contrary motion to the other parts which are rising at a fairly climactic moment. All right, let's go from here. Why I paused is it's very clever how they have the famous motif from Bohemian Rhapsody combined with We Are The Champions. What is happening? Time after time. Jeff is singing in the same key as Freddie in terms of the melody. So the melody is the same notes. But here, they're inherently using the harmonic progression, the chords from Bohemian Rhapsody. So it's transforming We Are The Champions. In other words, the, the chords that we're hearing are different because of the Bohemian Rhapsody part, even though the We Are The Champions melody is the same. And why it's weird is because they're in C minor. So the melody... <laughs> But Bohemian Rhapsody, this part, they're singing in C major, so. All right, let's carry on. Yeah, this is very, very cool, isn't it? Time after time. Rubbed on my sentence. But committed no crime. And bad mistake.
when I'm not with you, think of me always. Ah, mental health pause. This is absurd in a musical sense, in a storytelling sense. It is crazy. Very, very cool. Very, very clever arrangement. And they just kind of throw one line from a song just here and there, very, very subtly. Again, I'm probably missing so much, but look, let's go back through it and I'll pick out some of the parts that I think are worthy of mention. Yeah, very, very cool. All right, let's go from when Jeff kind of smashes the floor. His walking bass here, fantastic. I complimented his walking bass quite a lot in my last voice play reaction, Friends on the Other Side. Card up here, do check that out if you haven't already. <laughs> But his melody on top of that there, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I had to rewind to, to listen to that again. Sometimes my impatience does get the better of me. Such a clean transition from the blended voice into his upper chest voice. We don't hear that much of it, but it's great. What a nice tone. Very rocky, uh, so good. That then leads into this bit where, again, the harmony changed, completely changed. I've had my shares and kicked in my face, but I've come through. The reason, Jeff's walking bass again. He's walking down those musical steps. So he's going. I'm sure we're all very familiar with this pattern. It reminds me of Bugsy Malone. So this is what we're hearing, this is what we think he's doing. Ah, but no, his fourth note is different. So he goes, but then, and then, which allows for this kind of major rejuvenation. On those on and on and ons, we can really hear Earl, you know, high up there. And I'm expecting this huge, we are the champions moment. What happens though, we get a key change. And it's much more rhythmic now. It's kind of like this Euro dance type beat. Overall, it is just like a dream where things are just a bit odd and different, recognizable for sure, but just strange and almost quite trippy. Champions, my friend. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's very clever. And Jay Nunn is really, really loving his uh, higher registers here as well. I love how Earl is singing along too and his face is kind of just like, what the heck is going on? We are the <laughs> then we get the rock Ellie, you know, ah, his voice is perfect for it, perfect. And it's so high. Are you happy? Are you satisfied? I'm longing to stand here. Jeez. <laughs> Here, I was really starting to doubt whether these were actually two different songs. I just had to Google the lyrics of each to sanity check. They've not put We Will Rock You in the description, but fair enough if it's only just that little bit. A catchy song as well, but definitely not my favorite Queen song. For Under Pressure, which comes next, the bass riff. That's probably the most iconic part of the whole song. I would have guessed for that reason that voice play would have isolated it. Jeff on his own, possibly really, really low. But nope, he sings it with everyone else. <laughs> Moving from really low, actually. It's very subtle and fairly high for a bass part, so it's even less distinguishable. It's a nice touch that I think it really, really just blends into the overall sound. <laughs> Our focus naturally is mostly on Earl and the lyrics, pressure pushing down on me, a very literal representation here, which in turn kind of emphasizes the breaking free moment. I really love this bit and we'll notice that Earl implements a very hard crack to emphasize the change between his chest voice and his head voice. Oh, I want to break free. We get a layered chord as well underneath on free. To really emphasize again the breaking free, straight into under pressure as well. Very, very, very nice uh, mix of words and musical motif. Ah, oh, 
this arrangement, it's so free. There's a lot of freedom in its harmonic changes, structural changes, it's, it's quite something. I wonder how much of this was Ellie's doing because I see the arrangement is by Ellie and Lane. All right, let's go from this part. We had this very classic sustained note in the melody with a very classic cadential chord progression, but we don't get that final chord to really close up the cadence. Instead, we get a heartbeat. <laughs> Blimey. Blimey. This, this is a blimey moment. I, I loved that. I thought it was really, really good. And one thing that I've noticed with music and the music that I tend to be more emotionally drawn to is how well it flows. The continuity, the, I don't want to say linear path of it because I don't think music is in any way linear. And when you get medleys, often there isn't that much flow because you have to be cut and changing, getting new songs. So I'm conflicted when there's an arrangement like this where there are some very sudden changes and key changes and quite drastic changes, but it's just so good. All right, a handful of things from that final uh, section. It was interesting hearing Earl Solo here. It's this lighter, more airy voice of his. From the few times I've heard Earl previously, it's been his very distinct, high, you know, laser direct, chest blended full voice. This part, very, very nice homophony, really exaggerating the slight chord changes here and there. It's so easy. All you have to do is play the game. Play the game. And then we've got that heartbeat sound in the background, but Jeff's part, maybe it's just me, but I think it really adds to the heartbeat effect. Game, everyone play the game. And that heartbeat is quicker than it has just been previously. That leads into this bit, which I think is very cool, very cinematic visually. The audio too, with these muffled effects. And it's even better because Earl is, you know, he's a well-built bloke. He looks like a rugby player. So breaking free from this hospital equipment, I think it's quite humorous. Then this bit, I mean, we have Earl solo. It's incredible, but that's a given. So I'm not going to speak about it. I find myself drawn to Jeff's bass part once more. It's a very clever bass part. It's not what you'd expect. Very fluid. <laughs> Yeah, it's a very clever arrangement, I keep saying, but that is what I think. Also very difficult what Jeff's doing there, you know, jumping around. There was a moment of Radio Gaga, an excerpt of Radio Gaga fitting very nicely with Bohemian Rhapsody. <laughs> I'm thinking what they're going to do here because the harmony is going to need to change. <laughs> 
So they cut out Radio Gaga and go into Show Must Go On. Again, in an unexpected fashion. It's funny because Earl now just starts yeeting away these fantastic musicians. The music world will be very sore of their losses. <laughs> But his voice, I can officially say I've been fully exposed to it now. It's a voice I won't forget. Then this bit. Ooh, that chord, the E flat. It just stands out and funks it up. If we move some of the notes from this chord close together, we get something like. And yay, Earl lives. I bet he won't go into a coma again anytime soon. Or he will, because that was a mad arrangement. Crazy and great, and he definitely loved singing as part of it. I really, really enjoyed that. I love Queen. I think their music is really, really phenomenal. I love voice play. I think they're phenomenal. Combination of the two with an arrangement like this, so inventive and... I'm going to use that word again, just clever. Yeah, let's leave that one there. Thank you again for this request and thank you to everyone for watching. Would appreciate a like and subscribe. If you enjoy my content and want to support me, join the Patreon for perks. Please do so at the link on the screen and I will see you next time.